Well, this is a vlog with a bit of a difference, folks. I'm going off on a trip down memory lane on Big Red Buzz. Hop on board and I shall explain all. See if I can remember how to put it into first gear. And I can! And we're off. Um, <laughs> folks, I should start by introducing Big Red Buzz. I don't know uh, if you have children around my kids' age, uh, late teens, 20s, but at the time that we were rearing them, there was a cartoon on television. We'd only just moved to Ireland and it was called Tractor Tom. I think it could have been on the BBC Kids channels. And uh, Tractor Tom was the red tractor in it, but the quad bike in it was called Buzz. So we give um, this <laughs> quad bike uh, the name Big Red Buzz in true Tractor Tom style. Now, let me start by saying as well that uh, I bought Big Red Buzz, which is a Honda Foreman 400. I bought it off eBay in 2001, and I paid 2,000 pounds sterling for it. The best two grand I've ever spent. It's still going strong. I only get it serviced like once every sort of four or five years, and, uh, as well as it being a tr well, as well as it being a quad bike, it's a tractor. Um, it's a um, uh, food carrier for the horses. It's also provided huge entertainment for the kids, as well as being a hearse for dead animals, which we've brought down to the the field here. Uh, in fact, this mound you can see here is a sort of pet cemetery, if you like, and uh, we've countless pets, unfortunately, all buried there. And uh, this is always a sad journey to come down here on Big Red Buzz uh, with, a, with one of our sort of family pets in the trailer behind us. And then we'll all dig the hole and uh, say a prayer. And uh, this is just a lovely place to come, actually. It's a very peaceful place to come. So uh, if you haven't guessed already, uh, this is our land. Um, we've, uh, we've quite a bit of it here in Ireland and uh, it all leads, well, these are the bottom fields. These lead down to the lake, which we'll be going to see in a minute. But um, the reason I'm making this video, I'll get soft and sloppy here now and emotional. I'm feeling very emotional, that's why I'm making this video. Um, my two eldest kids have uh, just left the nest to go off and... Uh, do their, their own things, you know. Um, uh, my eldest lad, he's gone off to a, a summer camp in Texas as an, uh, an instructor because he uh, shoots clay pigeons. So he's gone to instruct um, kids on a summer camp how to shoot clay pigeons over in America for three months. And my daughter, my eldest daughter anyway, is going uh, interrailing across Europe. So big changes in our household. Uh, you probably see these tracks before me. I actually came down before I started making this video just to make sure it was rideable. I was thinking of bringing the Honda CRF 300L down into the fields here, which is, to be honest, one of the reasons I bought it, because of the fields. Uh, and I think I've been able to ride in the fields twice. So normally, all year round, these fields are absolutely soaking. We have horses here. That's what my wife and daughter do. They're mad into their horses and uh, the show jump and whatever else so there's 10 horses we have and look at the state of the fields you just can't keep your land nice when you have that many horses um so uh, so my hopes of bringing the crf down here would uh, probably re result in a few broken bones so it's bad enough on big red buzz looks uh, volcanic doesn't it <laughs> It's so dried out th at the minute. Oh, that's the other thing, yeah, when it's not absolutely soaking uh, and basically swamp-like, then on the th three or four days a year we get with blistering sunshine like this, um, it, it turns into this um, volcanic-like uh, mud. And uh, it's just, I mean, if you came off the CRF down here as well, oh my God, you'd do yourself a good bit of damage. Um, so I'm just going to turn down here. Normally this is all, the, the drainage is so bad in these fields as well. Normally this is a river running all the way down the verge here as well. And the lake is beyond the bushes down there. We're riding down there. So I shall show you in a minute. 
beautiful places to sit and have a picnic if you can avoid the rushes there's 23 acres we have in total here it's split so there's 11 acres down the front and we've 12 acres up the back and uh, it's all for grazing we don't do anything with it when we moved in we used to let it out to the um, local farmers to graze that cattle but then our dogs of which we have 12 dogs our dogs uh, took huge objection to cows grazing in their fields uh, anyway it's a it's a busy old farm but uh, unfortunately it's only our pets it's uh, it's not anything which makes money for us <laughs> unfortunately it's flattened out lovely here now hasn't it it's a great wee spot uh, to go camping It'd be great to put a tent down here there's actually a river beyond these trees here and uh, I saw my first ever kingfisher down here just on the other side of those hedges there the river obviously or the stream whatever you want to call it feeds into the lake now these trees here look like a boundary I think they are there's a boundary fence through um, which is marked by these trees if I remember rightly you can see my tracks where I was down earlier it's not somebody else riding around the field well I hope not anyway come on big red boss tackling this with gusto <laughs> look at the old girl covered in dust or shall I just say it's character I think it is character we um, you know we've made do with big red bows until we've needed bigger jobs done when the tractors come in um, but uh, she's never let us down two grand off eBay <laughs> 22 years ago uh, what an investment now we're rising up onto um, slightly higher ground here which is why the rushes have disappeared and the lake is beyond here in fact why don't I take you down to the lake now because I have a few other things to tell you when uh, we go into the top fields what an evening fished this lake only a couple of times as well it's crazy isn't it when it's on your doorstep you tend to ignore it but uh, I've also fallen in <laughs> just for the record <laughs> I do love uh, stopping down here just to take a look. The scenery is absolutely stunning here. There are pike in here as well. My cousin came to visit me once and uh, he caught a pike, um, or the pike caught him, shall we say. He'd caught a little roach or a perch and as he was pulling it out of the water, this pike came out of the water and took it. I know it's a bit of a fisherman's tale, but seriously, you got to believe me, it was massive. I'm just pleased I didn't catch it. So I do know it's probably still in here, which is why I'd, ne I'd never go skinny dipping in here. Sorry to put uh, that image in your in your head. Right, let's get back to the fields. I remember once we brought our old uh, Volvo estate down here. Obviously the grass was much shorter and the fields were in much better condition. I think we'd only moved in. We had actually, we'd only been in the house for about two months and like uh, true townies moving to the country we thought we'd drive the Volvo estate down into the field here when we only had two kids we now have four but when the two kids were really young and we had a picnic and we had the most wonderful afternoon until we tried to get the Volvo estate back up of course and uh, we sunk <laughs> so we we had to ring around and then I disappeared over this bit of uh, fence here and went down the road looking for anybody uh, lo and behold um, a, a man on a tractor came by of which there are plenty living here and uh, I told him our predicament and he knew all about us moving into the area um, rumor has it they thought my wife was a Hollywood actress and they thought I was a famous American TV or film director so sort of close but probably uh, a few million uh, quid in the bank short of uh, their uh, dreams <laughs> but anyway nevertheless he came to our rescue 
towed us out with his uh, tractor and uh, we became best friends since then actually. Our idea when we bought this was uh, we were always going to um, put a, a log cabin in the field down here. Never really got round to it. You know all those ideas when you move into a place and you're going to do this and you're going to do that and everything's going to be fantastic. Well, don't get me wrong, things have been fantastic, but we just didn't have half the time we thought we were going to have. Uh, and needless to say, the log cabin still hasn't happened. Maybe it will one day. Uh, it'll make, I mean, what we always thought was it'll make a fantastic fisherman's uh, retreat, especially with the lake. Now, I've got to tell you this as well before we go up into the top fields. I always used to have um, one or two of the kids, one sitting in front of me, one uh, behind me, coming back up this hill. And I used to pretend that Big Red Buzz was never going to be able to make it up the hill. And I used to get the kids to shout, Come on, Big Red Buzz, you can do it! And I'd sort of, I'd, I'd sort of stop here and then just roll back down a bit. Well, the uh, excitement on the kids, it was absolutely hilarious. Uh, and uh, I mean, they honestly thought that Big Red Buzz wasn't able to do it. So when we used to get to the top, oh my God, the euphoria. Um, the celebrations we used to have was just incredible. Great memories, folks. And uh, <laughs> don't get stuck on me now, Big Red Buzz. For real, after me just saying how incredible you were. <laughs> and have a few more memories to bring you in the top fields, if we actually get there. So let's just take a um, slightly, well, a more diagonal route. We'll, we'll even this out. So I can hear the kids now shouting, come on, Big Red Buzz, you can do it. That's it, Big Red Buzz. You can do it. <laughs> oh, my God. The kids are ringing in my ears here. I'm getting emotional now. So we're just entering the top fields in a uh, similar style. Dreadful condition, thanks to the horses. But listen, we're not farmers. We have no need uh, for the fields uh, other than horses, really. Uh, talking of which, there's four of them. Should we go and have a, a little look? I'm not, they've never seen the quad bike before. Cheapest, oh no, they're not too happy about them. I don't know the names of them or anything like that. We've far too many animals for me for me to start remembering names. But uh, whilst I'm not really into the horses, I did try it. I think uh, I might have mentioned it on previous videos. My wife and uh, daughter bought me a horse just for me to sort of be involved in their hobby at weekends. But uh, two brains are very dangerous, I think. So I give up the horses and I moved into horsepower. And uh, as you all know, motorbikes are now my thing. They're very curious, aren't they? They are gorgeous to look at. I do appreciate horses, absolutely stunning. Now, every time uh, my wife gives out to me about uh, going out on my motorbikes, I just remind her of uh, what her hobby is, because to me, that's far more dangerous. What a lovely evening. I know I'm always giving out about the um, the VFR, the 800, and the heat which comes off the engine. Well, tonight I've got my shorts on, and I'm sure the hair on my legs is singed. The heat is so great off this engine. Mind you, I don't think I've moved out of second gear because the fields are so bad. Don't know how many gears it's got, actually. I think it's got five. The horses are coming up for a look behind me. If you're not used to being around horses, it can be quite scary when uh, they're sort of running towards you. As they do many a time when I'm coming for a walk up here with the dogs. Um, I don't really like horses sort of charging towards me. Let's have a little uh, look into this field. Not taking any chances. I don't want them horses coming through. I mean, just look at her, folks. What a fantastic machine. She's so old, she's retro. Bit like myself so i don't know how old she was when i bought her but uh we've had so many amazing times on this uh, quad bike and uh, i'll never forget the memories actually this is really weird because it was about here 
one summer um, back in 2006 we just met uh, a couple uh, at a wedding <laughs> believe it or not uh, um, who turned into our best friends ever uh, John and Caroline I won't give you the surname just in case they don't want to be identified unfortunately Caroline passed away six years ago and I'm well, still not quite over it but um, John's a photographer and he took a photograph uh, of myself my wife and our two kids this is it up on the screen now um, it's a sort of black and white canvas as we have it uh, in the house but obviously it's on this bike and it was at this spot in our top field here just in exactly the same spot I'm sure Caroline's looking down on us now she loved it up here Yeah, many years ago we set a tent up here and we just used to bring picnics in a trailer on the back of Big Red Buzz up into the top field here, actually the far corner. And uh, we just used to sit and look down over the view, which you'll see in a minute, um, and enjoy our picnics and just have wonderful, wonderful times. Wouldn't it be an incredible thing if my children could bring their children back to the same spot? And who knows, maybe he's bringing them up here on Big Red Buzz. She's going strong, there's no, need, there's no reason why not. The other thing I used to do as well, on kids' parties, um, I mean, it's such a community spirit when you live in the country. You have to make the effort, otherwise you'll have no interaction. So, uh, needless to say, every birthday party is a big ordeal, especially when the kids are younger. And, uh, of course, uh, all of the friends of our kids used to love coming out even though their par parents are mainly farmers um, I suppose they're sick of going out on tractors uh, so to them to come out on Big Red Buzz was a bit of a novelty and uh, I kitted out the trailer we used to have on the back with seats in it or benches more like and uh, all the young kids I think I used to bring 10 at a time up into the top fields here now we used to bring them up here and then we used to look for the foxholes all, all the way down the hedge line and, uh, you know, they were so convinced with the stories I'd be telling them about Mr. Fox. Like, I tell you, 90% of them were convinced that they'd seen Mr. Fox. By the time we got back down to the house, it was brilliant, brilliant stuff. Now, I'm just going to turn around now and reveal this view. You can see why we had a tent up here. Now, over there in the distance uh, is... Oh... The Morn Mountains is over there, and Dundalk, the coast basically, is over that way. Um, and this is the this is the furthest point away from our house, uh, if you like. But uh, yeah, I just I, I just love sitting up here as well when I come up here with the dogs. Uh, solitude, can't hear anything up here. Well, you can now, of course. But anyway, do you know what I'll do? Now, just listen. Oh yeah, you can hear the um, the milking machines on the neighbouring farm. Well, <laughs> well, when it's not milking time, believe me, the silence up here is golden, so they say. On that note, um, it's probably about time I shut up. <laughs> and I might stay up here um, just for a wee while longer. Uh, no vlogging, no cameras. I might just uh, savour it. I often say that especially on the latest series I did uh, over in, um, gosh, where was I? Not Connemara, the one I did on Inner Sharon, Ackill Island. Um, I came back from that and thought I really must savour the views a lot more. I really must enjoy it a lot more and stop a little bit more often and put the camera down. Anyway, on that note, folks, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I hope you enjoyed my little trip down memory lane, albeit a little bit different for one of my vlogs, but I feel it this stage um you sort of know a lot about me now and uh, i've no problem opening up and revealing my past a little bit um it shows you a little bit more um you know my well who i am and uh, i hope uh, you can see i'm a i'm a decent enough bloke as well i'm also as soft as clots because i'm getting totally emotional again wonderful times here Hopefully there'll be more to come. Right, I have to turn off and dry the eye. Okay, folks, you know who we are. Thanks so much for tuning in to this one. Really, really enjoyed you being here. All the best.